more than I'm going to be showing you. is a drill in a driveway by five years ago, which means that it actually fits within the profile of your face frame. So we have our miniature wall built. I'm going to show you how a stud finder works. So this is the Franklin stud finder. Out of all of the stud finders that I've tried, this is by far the most accurate and easiest to use. So it just has a button right here and you can see, I'm gonna start right here where there's no stud. As I go and slide this closer to the stud, you see these three red lines that show up, sometimes four. That is showing you exactly where a stud is and as you keep moving it, the lines continue to move. That way you know that the stud is right there. And then as I move this direction, you can see that the lights start to blink again because we know that there is a stud here at the end. So when you go to mark studs, I would mark where the two outer red lines are. So let's do that. Okay, so here are my two red lines. I'm gonna mark on this red line and that red line. So I know that in between these two lines is where my stud is. And that way when I go to hang something or nail in something, I can put it right where my studs are. So as we go to install a baseboard trim, you can see that the baseboard is always going to be hitting your footer. So if you go to install a nail here at, you know, within the bottom inch, you're always gonna hit a piece of wood and it's gonna hold secure. But sometimes your trim tends to kind of pull away from the wall. So it's really important to go ahead and mark your studs and insert it straight into the studs. You want it nail and screw into studs as often as possible because it's gonna avoid any major mistakes of accidentally hitting any type of electrical or plumbing um, with a nail or screw. Now that being said, there are gonna be times where you're installing you know, some type of trim or accent wall and you're not able to hit a stud. And what you're gonna wanna do in that instance is you're gonna wanna angle your gun to shoot your nails at different directions and I'll show you here exactly what that looks like. So if I install this, directly onto studs, this is only three brad nails. Fits directly onto studs. Then you can see right here, this piece is not coming out. It is solid, it is secure. There is very limited gap here on the side that is easily caulked. And you're not gonna worry about hitting any type of electrical, plumbing, anything like that. Now, if you're trying to install it on a piece of drywall that is not that does not have a stud behind it, here's what you need to do. Now there's two different techniques. One is to angle, see how I'm not, before on this piece I was going straight down. Now I'm gonna angle it ever so slightly and shoot a nail in and then I'm gonna take it this direction and shoot a nail in the opposite direction. Now the other technique is to shoot a nail so that it's facing up and then shoot a nail and you can do this spaced out shoot a nail that's facing down and you can alternate those to pick it up you can see the nails here inside how they are going at different angles can you see that so now you can see this is also not coming out now here's what happens if I go into the sheetrock, nailing them in straight instead of at angles. Okay. I only did three nails, just like I did in this first piece that is very, very secure. This one, I did three nails in straight, not at an angle, not into studs, it literally pulls right out, okay? So the wrong way to do it, the angled right way to do it, the straight into stud way to do it. So let's chat for a second about drywall anchor. So if you're trying to hang something on your wall um, and you're not able to get it into a stud, like a curtain rod or a picture frame or something a little heavier, um, you're gonna wanna use a drywall anchor. Now there's several different types of drywall anchors. A lot of these drywall anchors actually, the style comes with whatever you're purchasing that's supposed to be anchored. And let me tell you why these suck. <laughs> so 
first off, you have to pre-drill. Secondly, as you're going to hammer them in, a lot of times they get bent and they're just not great. Um, versus these tapping drywall anchors, all you need is a screwdriver. You don't need to pre-drill. Um, they go in very easily and the less tools sometimes, the better. So let me show you how to put these in. We know that this big section right here has no studs. So I'm just gonna take a regular screwdriver, put it in, and I'm gonna put some force down to kind of puncture the drywall. And then I'm just gonna turn my screwdriver and I'm screwing it in to the drywall. See how easy this goes in with just a screwdriver. And it is secure in there. Now we're gonna take the accompanied screw and with the same screwdriver, we are just gonna turn. And I'll show you what this looks like from the back because it's pretty cool. Okay, we'll leave that out a little bit so our picture or whatever we're hanging can feed off of that. And now as I flip it around, you remember the drywall anchor was pointed um, at the very tip, but as I screw in the screw, you can see that it actually separates and opens like a wing. So this is what's giving it the added strength is it's opening up that way as there's weight put on the screw, um, this isn't gonna come falling out. Now let's try and insert these just for pigs and noodles. Okay. So here is an entire pack of assorted drill bits. So on the back right here, it tells you exactly um, what each bit is used for. But the basic gist is any of the ones with a point, so these four are gonna create circular, larger circular holes. And then these three right here that have points, they are meant to go into wood. Any of these that have more of like a flatter edge are meant to go into stone, masonry, brick. Anyone, any of these down here are more universal. They're meant to go into wood, plastic, metal. So says all that on the back if you're ever wondering exactly what drill bit to use for what. Now, when you're choosing a drill bit amongst so many different sizes, you're gonna wanna find one that is slightly smaller than whatever it is that you're trying to put into the hole that you're pre-drilling. And how you figure that out is you literally just butt the two up together and you just feel with your hands and make sure that this one is slimmer than this one. Um, there are also other tools and guides that you can actually stick your screw in and figure out the measurements of it. I don't think that that's fully necessary um, that you can just go like this. Okay, now let's pre-drill for this anchor that is not great. Easy peasy. Now these anchors have to be tapped in. So we're just gonna lightly push and then we need our hammer. Okay, now that is put in and then we need to get our screw. Okay. And now you can see right here that this one, it opened up as well, but the actual surface area of it being opened is a lot smaller than this toggle um, drywall bit. So than this toggle drywall anchor. So I would definitely opt for purchasing these as opposed to these generic ones that come with all of your furniture. Now, if you're ever questioning your stud finder and you're just not sure if it's actually where it says your stud is, you can always just take a very tiny drill bit. You can drill in and see if you hit a stud. So this is drilling in slowly and you can see that the drill, once it goes past the sheetrock, it loses all, um, it just can easily slide in and out, okay? Versus drilling into a stud, as I get through the sheetrock, you can see that I still have resistance. Now my drill bit is stuck in the wood and I have to reverse it out. So that's one easy way to check and then those holes are tiny and you can easily fill them. Or that I'm going to be showing you is a drill in a driver which means that it actually fits.